Hello, I'm Ayub from Zama, and today we are going to take a quick tour at the MLIR compiler used in Concrete. For those who don't already know what uh, MLIR is, we can describe it briefly as being a framework for building reusable and extensible compiler infrastructure. The compiler takes an MLIR program produced by uh, the front end, for example, and generates an executable binary. In a previous tutorial by Umut, you saw that uh, the front end was generating an MLIR from a Python function which then get passed through to the MLIR compiler. Today, we will start from a simple MLIR example without the use of uh, front-end. And the example we'll use uh, is taking two different inputs. The first one is a four by four tensor of encrypted integers. The second one is a four by two uh, tensor of plain integers. Functions start by applying a, multiplication, a matrix multiplication to the first and second inputs, and then follow that with the application of lookup table to every element of the tensor using uh, just a random lookup table defined here. If you go into the uh, readme of the compiler directory, you will find instructions on how to set up your environment to build the MLIR compiler. Everything is ready on my side, so I just have to uh, build it. I also already built it um, to avoid spending much time on this during the tutorial. So now that it has been built, um, we can use the compiler to um, compile our example. So the compiler binary allows you to compile uh, an MLIR program as well as debugging uh, the intermediate representation at different stages of the compilation. First, we just want to compile it, compile our example. And we can do this by instructing the compiler to compile, and specify the output directory, let's say example out. And of course, specify our uh, we can check our uh, output directory to see what artifacts are being uh, generated. So uh, you can see the uh, SPO file, uh, and it's where the compiled code is at. We can load it and execute it uh, from, uh, from here. There is also the um, client's uh, parameter file. We can uh, print it. Yeah. So the client parameter file contains uh, public parameters that can be used to generate um, the different keys needed for the encrypted execution as well as to understand what are the inputs and outputs of the circuit. For example, here we have like parameters for the bootstrap keys. We have information about the inputs, precision, uh, dimension uh, for tensors. Um, same, for example, for the key switch, the parameters for generating key switching key for this specific um, circuit, information about the outputs, etc. So that was a typical use case. Now, if we want to uh, debug the compilation of this program, we can use more uh, advanced options. First, we can uh, dump the intermediate representation at a certain point. And we can quickly check the um, help page, see what are the possible options. Of course, there is uh, a lot of options here, but what's uh, interesting now is this dump actions. So th this allows you to dump the IR um, uh, at specific dialect. So for example, the um, example we showed previously was using FHE and FHE Linux dialect. And then uh, what we want to do is to dump uh, the IR at the TFHE dialect. So after uh, some uh, lowering passes have been applied, and to see how the AR uh, 
looks like at the TF82 level. So just instead of compiling, so we will uh, dump the AR. We don't need an output directory, and we'll instruct it to dump TF82. So we got uh, the same uh, function, but um, we now have the matrix multiplication, which is written as uh, nested for loops um, using the TFHE multiplication, TFHE addition. And then the same uh, lookup table that was previously written in FHE uh, is now written with TFHE, and we can see it's also a for loop, iterating over every element of the tensor and applying the lookup table, which is implemented using uh, a case switch and a bootstrap. Another um, interesting option is to enable uh, debug mode. So this is much more verbose, uh, but it also shows the pattern rewrites that are being applied uh, during lowering passes. So if you have like some pass uh, that is not um, behaving as expected, so you can uh, use the debug mode to understand what's happening during these lowering passes. Um, so that was it for uh, today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed working through it as well. And um, see you soon on another tutorial.